Hello and welcome to the next step in creating high dynamic range images using multiple exposures. In our previous episode, we would used Adobe Photoshop to create a series of multiple exposures of a single raw image. In this episode, we are going to use Phonomatics Pro, my tool of choice, to create a, an HDR image. Now, in order to do this, you would have either had to create a set of multiple exposures as we'd gone, in, gone through in our last episode, or you would have multiple exposures that you would have shot using automatic exposure bracketing on your digital SLR. No matter. In either case, you would have a set of images, and we're going to start with the assumption that you do have those images. So, in Photomatics Pro, we're going to come to the Workflow Shortcuts menu and use the Generate HDR button. The dialog box opens up, says that go ahead and browse for your images. I store my images in a single location and I've created one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten exposures, all spaced out at 0.67 of an EV. And I'm going to use them all to create the HDR. So do a control A in Windows and attempt to load them all. Now you've got to be a little bit careful over here because we had ten images. What Photomatics has done is it's only loaded six. And this is one of the things about Photomatics, it's a little bit tricky, you've got to watch out for. Sometimes it's because the application can't access enough memory to call all the images in. It's a simple fix, go back, browse, and get the remaining four images. That's all you've got to do. Just make sure that you've got all ten images and you're good to go. Go ahead and click OK. And the next dialog box that opens up has all the images loaded up in the order of their exposure. It's one of the nice things about Photomatics. One of the things that's not so nice is the fact that it just assumes that they are spaced at one f-stop each, which is not the case. And that's where a little manual intervention is required. So you're going to use the little drop-down list over here where it says specify the EV spacing and select the EV spacing that you've set it to. I've done these at a two-thirds of an f-stop of EV spacing. That's what we're going to go ahead and choose and hit OK. The next dialog box pops up, asks you whether you want to align source images, attempt to reduce ghosting artifacts, and uh, what do you want to do about the tone curve. Now, I'm using a set of images that were generated off a single raw file, and hence I don't have to align source images. However, if you're using three separate exposures that were taken using AEB, you would want to check this option. Likewise, the same thing applies for attempting to reduce ghosting artifacts. I'm using a single image with multiple components that were digitally generated, hence I don't need to worry about this. But if you're using multiple uh, exposures uh, that you've obtained using AEV, you'd need to check this option. I never worry about the turn curve. It's really, I'll deal with this later on. You could attempt to reverse engineer the turn curve applied, but I recommend that you go with the former. Go ahead, hit OK, and Photomatics will take its time to go ahead and load all the source images up. Now, once Photomatics has loaded all its images, you will get this window where the image looks a little bit well, overwhelming at the least. Well, it has generated an HDR, but the way on how our monitors are set up, they're not designed to display HDR images. Although, if you mouse over, the little HDR viewer in the top left hand corner will actually show you that there's the full range of frequencies out there and a lot of noise. Now, noise is one of the things that you will have to deal with with HDR images and there is a way to deal with it that I will cover in a future tutorial. But long story short, your HDR image has just begun to take shape. Your next step to get something that's going to be visually pleasing is to use the tone mapping menu right over here. Tone mapping will give you the set of options in its menu. You've got some primary controls. Strength, color saturation, light smoothing, luminosity, you have your friendly histogram, and then you have a couple of menus. The main ones we're going to worry about are the tone and the color. The bicro, the SH, we'll worry about that later. The tone menu will allow you to control your white point and your black point. And then of course you have your gamma, which allows you to shift backwards and forwards depending on whether you want a color shift. I rarely ever use this on a 360 degree image, so generally you wouldn't have to worry about that. 
when you load Photomatics up for the first time, you're generally going to be set up based on its defaults. And uh, usually sets its strength to 70 and its color saturation to 46. And uh, I look at the image and it says, hmm, it's a little blah. It looks really, really ordinary. I like my HDRs to be nice and strong. So I typically have my strength set up to 90 and my color saturation also set up to 90. Keep an eye on the histogram because that will begin to move. You've got to keep an eye on this because you want to make sure that there's as little clipping as possible and that you have a nice even distribution across all your frequency ranges of light. The light smoothing parameter defines how smoothly they're going to be transitions between highlights, shadows, and midtones. And you'll notice that depending on where you set that, there is a sense of halos being created and a sense of roughness. I like my images to look nice and smooth, and hence I have my light smoothing set up all the way at the top. The luminosity uh, brightens and brightens the shadows and essentially increases local contrast. That's what the tooltip says. But pretty much it kind of adds artificial light, or so it would seem, or takes away from it. It really depends on what you want to do. This image was shot fairly carefully and uh, using the correct white balance settings in my camera, and hence I don't really need to worry about it. The next things I need to worry about are my white point and my black point. Now, as the tooltips say, uh, this uh, these are controls for contrast right across the entire image. Uh, con by trial and error, but I find that my best settings are a 0.25% for a white point and a 0.11% for a black point. Now, this isn't a hard and fast rule, it's just what I've generally found. You can go ahead and mess around with these and try to see what works out best for you. Now we're almost there. Other things to just look at. The color menu, if you want to make this image look colder, drag the temperature all the way to the left, you get a tinge of blue, drag it all the way to the right, you get a tinge of red. Uh, really depends on what kind of look you're going for. I want to keep mine quite natural and I'm going to set that in the middle of the line. You can also control the saturation of your highlights and your shadows. Once again, this image isn't properly shot, I don't really need to worry about it. There are some micro contrast and micro, micro smoothing controls. Once again, how much of it do you want to do to minimize the minimal etchiness? These two will control it. I rarely ever touch these. The smoothing and clipping controls how much of that is going to happen. Generally, I set this down to its default values and don't mess around with it very much, especially when the image has been properly shot. All right, all that being done, go ahead and hit Process, and Photomatix will go ahead and generate your HDR image. And finally, you have an HDR image that looks very decent. And you notice that this is an image created out of exposure 2.00 and 9 more. So I've actually used 10 images. You could go with 3, 4, and more. You've really got to decide what range do you want to capture and how many components do you think you're going to use. And it's trial and error before you get a good grip of it. Before finishing up, make sure you save the image. Save as. I'm going to save it as a JPEG but I'm going to save it in a place where I know that I can recall it fairly easily and I'm going to give it a functional name. And there you have it. That's how you create an HDR in Photomatix Pro. Hope this was helpful. More tips, tricks, and a daily image every day on www.doubleconvex.com. Thanks for joining me.